Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm taking a look at the Hug Sleep Sleep Pod. This was on Shark Tank season 12. It's supposedly an alternative to weighted blankets that doesn't trap heat and is more easily washed. Let's see how it really works in today's video. This is the Sleep Pod Move. They also have the Classic. I paid 90 bucks for this, which is kind of steep. The Classic is about 80 bucks. I think originally the Classic was 100, so it's come down in price a little bit. I think the only difference between the Move and the Classic is the Move has more mobility and your feet can stick out more. As of right now, from what I can tell, the Move has five sizes, the Classic has six, and they all kind of come in this gray color. Maybe they'll have more colors down the road. They say it simulates being hugged and it has four-way stretch material that compresses and calms. Let's crack it open. Some basic instructions here, I have to read those over. The instructions say that it's inspired by deep touch pressure therapy. They also say it helps you sleep faster and stay asleep. So you're supposed to put this on while you're laying on your bed. I think Robert on Shark Tank was goofing around standing up and he put it on. He ended up falling over and, and cracking his nose open and bleeding. They say you're supposed to do it in bed. That's what I'm gonna do. They say we use it for seven to 10 nights before becoming acclimated. I'll have to do that. Let me see how this feels. All right, well, it's a very soft material. Let's see, what, we, what do we have here? Obviously this is the top and I see a part for your feet down here at the bottom. I think what I'll do is I'll wash this first. I'll show you my first impressions and after a week, I'll update you and let you know how it's changed. So first up, I'm gonna wash it and then get started on my first use. Looks like a big pair of pants, doesn't it? Well, this is the Move. Supposedly has more flexibility and mobility than the original. Of course, it's also $10 more. They say it was created as an alternative to weighted blankets. It kind of swaddles you without weighing you down. Now the way they're showing the people putting it on in their videos is they were sitting on the edge of the bed. They say to put it on like you're putting on a pair of pants seated. So let me try that and see how it actually works. All right, let's see how easy this is here. Oh, well, pretty easy. It feels like a really thin sleeping bag. That's what that feels like. All right, so they, this is the way they're showing it, like, the, like this. Then they show the users going off the, on the bed like this and lifting up. Just like this. They say you can put it, your arms inside of it or outside of it. They say also you're supposed to take, I think a week to 10 days to get used to it. We shall see about that. I don't know if I, if I like my arms in here or not. It's about the thickness of a, a sheet and they have this opening down the bottom you can put your feet out, which is easy enough. It is kind of stretchy. Wow, am I gonna feel claustrophobic? I'm not sure. Now when it comes time to get out of bed, they say that you can, they kind of showed someone doing like this. If you gotta get up in the middle of the night, do some business, they're kind of showing someone lifting it up and you can walk around. Do I really wanna walk around like that? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see how easy it is getting back on. That's easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'll give you an update on the first night and I'll give you an update on the seventh night and we'll wrap this thing up. So I'll see you tomorrow and let you know how it went. All right, so my first night in the sleep pod was over. That was definitely interesting. So he here's what happened on my first night. So I realized pretty quickly, I didn't like having my feet in the bottom there if they felt too constrained. So I popped them out of the opening, which is exactly how it's designed. So that in that respect, it actually worked quite well. I also noticed I didn't really like it over my shoulder like I would normally have covers because it was kind of pulling downward. I can, because it's kind of elastic, it was just pulling downward. I didn't like that sensation. So I had it underneath my arm instead. All right, so I woke up in the middle of the night and I had to go to the restroom and I noticed that by that point, the sleep pod had ridden all the way up to my knees. So I had it from my knees up to my chest. Now they say if you have to use the restroom in the middle of the night, you should just take it all the way off. But I didn't really want to fumble with that. I was kind of tired. I just wanted to do what I had to do and get back in bed. So I just kind of pulled it up even more and walked into the bathroom. And then when I had to use the restroom, I had to pull it up even more. It was up above my waist. So by the time I was done, I looked in the mirror. This is what I saw. So by the end of the night, I was basically wearing an elastic tube top. It was, <laughs> and I was also cold. I want to give it a fair shot. I'll keep playing with it. But after the first night, I wasn't really that impressed. So I'm going to check back in about a week and let you know how it goes in my final conclusion. All right, so it's actually been about two weeks since I first started using the sleep pod. I've used it almost every night since then. You get out of here. In that time, I've been trying to find other reviews for the sleep pod, reading comments about it. There really aren't a lot of first-hand reviews or a lot of comments, people speculating what they might think about it. And I think this is gonna be one of those reviews where I'm in the minority of people who don't really like it that much. I will say since that first night, if I've had to get up in the middle of the night, I just take the sleep pod off. That just seems 
a little bit easier than, than fumbling with it. I thought it was going to be easier not taking it off the first night. Well, since then I realized that taking it off is easier than not taking it off. But on this paper, I've got some random observations about my two weeks using the sleep pod. In no particular order, these are just things that I jotted down over the last two weeks. My first thought was, if there's an emergency in the middle of the night, say your dog's puking or you hear a loud sound, you usually can just throw the covers off and jump out of bed and go see what's going on. Well, with a sleep pod, you kind of have to get out of it first before you can go rush to it. In an emergency, a few seconds might matter. Probably a rare situation, but something to consider. Now, I spent much of the last week trying to figure out what word would best describe being in the sleep pod. They used the word swaddled, which I guess some people might agree with that. But in my case, I came up with the word tangled. I feel like I'm tangled up in the sheets. Like, <laughs> get me out of here. I feel tangled. And I feel less tangled now, but my feet are still tangled. Yeah, uh, get me out of here. So I think the moral of the story is that one man's swaddle is another man's tangled. Uh. On Shark Tank, the couple that was pitching it said you could put one foot out for temperature regulation. The instructions say you could put both feet out. I've been sleeping with both feet out, and I think that's the reason that it's riding up on me. So that if you don't have both feet out, or if you only have one, it probably won't ride up. In my case, it's been riding up every night. It goes all the way to my knees, which is not great, but I, I, I've been dealing with it. The Sleep Pod did get a deal on Shark Tank with Mark Cuban and Lori Grenier, and I think that there's gonna be a lot of people that do like this, and those people will probably curse me for this video because I have to admit I don't really like it very much. I mean, I'm really just trying to present both sides of it. I can see why some people would like this, but I'm just not one of those people. If you don't move around a lot in your sleep, you might like it. If you like being swaddled in your sleep, you'll probably like it. If you like to wrap yourself up in your sheets at night, you'll almost certainly like it. However, if you don't like any of those things, you might not like the sleep pod. And I'm one of those people that don't like any of those things. I actually feel like it hinders my sleep more than helps it, but I will say it's well made. It's very soft material and it does exactly what they say it's gonna do. I just, I just didn't really like it. The sleep pot is similar to something called a sensory sock, which is much cheaper, mainly for children, but if you wanna look that up as an alternative, that might be something to investigate for yourself. So I do think there's a market out there for the sleep pod, but it's not for everyone and I'm not one of those people. I also think the price is gonna be a deal breaker for some people, but if you've used a sleep pod, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time. All right, welcome to a bonus q and I actually finished the sleep pod video a couple weeks ago. I didn't know I was going to add this to it, so I signed off and here I am again. But I posted on my community tab on YouTube for some questions. I've got a lot of really good questions. I picked a few choice ones here. If I, you don't see yours here, maybe I'll do one in an upcoming video, so keep an eye out for that. But I've got several of them printed out here. I'll try to go quickly. I'll try not to have rambling answers so I can get to as many as I can. So let's get started with the first question. A Betty Frame wants to know, are you still thinking of doing a mattress review? I asked because there's several non-traditional mattresses out there like Purple and Helix. It does make choosing one harder. Yes, I'm actually doing two mattress reviews in the next six months. One of them is coming up in the next few weeks. That's more of a standard popular brand and down the road I'm gonna do a little bit less uh, standard one as well. So stay tuned for a mattress review in the next few weeks. And then probably another one within the next six months. Split Sniper 7 asks, do you have a home item that's a must have in all homes? This is the hardest question for me to answer because it's hard to really pick out one item that's going to appeal to everybody. If you're talking about a kitchen item, I'd probably say something like the Granite Rock Pan or the Range Mate Pro. If you have pets, I would probably say something like the Hurricane Fur Wizard. If you shave, I'd probably say the Philips One Blade, but there really isn't one item that appeals to everybody. It's a good question, but a hard one. Maybe the one that would appeal to everybody would be the Purple Mattress. Well, that's a bit steep cost-wise, but it's a great product. Dallin Porter asks, when people send you products unsolicited, how do you decide which ones to review and which ones to ignore? That's actually also a pretty good question. I, I, usually what I do is I try to think of what people would want to see. Uh, I think of how it will turn out in the video. I mean, there have been things that sent to me that I just, I can't, I can't review. And there are also things sent to me that just don't seem very interesting. I've been sent just coax cables with no explanation of why. Uh, what am I supposed to do with that? I'm not going to review a coax cable. So I, I try to find things that I think will be of interest, either whether they work or not, but people might want to know if they work. That's how I, that's how I choose. The Hermit asks, have you experienced YouTube burnout? If not, do you have any practices you do to keep yourself grounded? I would say I've gone through moments where I, I feel a little burned out. When you first start a YouTube channel and it starts getting success, you're kind of excited about it, but eventually it kind of becomes your job. I mean, it's my, it's my job, so you have to kind of take it a little bit more seriously. If I ever feel like I'm getting into a routine, usually what I'll do is either back off my production schedule, which I'm actually currently doing right now. I'm only posting once a week instead of six to eight times a month. 
And the other thing I do to remedy that is to buy new equipment because it's always fun to test out new stuff. So I'll buy something new and that kind of rejuvenates my, um, my desire to film. JTCCG asks, what is the absolute worst product you've ever reviewed? Now I've reviewed some pretty bad ones over the years. Uh, the Ice Wizard jumps to mind or the Cop Cam. Can't forget the Cop Cam, that, that's, that's up there. There's been some dumb ones like the Zoomies and Perfect Poly was another dumb one, but I don't know, there's a lot. It's hard to pick one, there's quite a few of them. Travis Gould asks, is the granite rock pan still used? And if so, how's it holding up? I bought one from your review, I still use it to this day. I use the granite rock and the granite stone pro to this day. I also use the hex clad pan as well. The always pan I've moved to my new location, so I still use that as well. I've got quite a few questions from people uh, such as Cynthia Hedge asking, did you move? We thought you said you did. A few videos back, you weren't in your normal kitchen. Nick Foon said in recent videos, you've been in a new kitchen. Armando Lopez, I've noticed a different new kitchen. Uh, Sean asked, what made you decide to rent an apartment? So I, I probably should have mentioned that a little bit better in previous videos. I, I did rent a new place that I'm gonna be doing some filming at. I'm, I'm still here. I haven't sold my house. I haven't moved. I just thought it would be easier sometimes uh, to have a place dedicated to filming because uh, there are four people and three pets in this house it can get a bit hectic sometimes so sometimes it's nice to just go over there and have a dedicated space so there's a lot of benefits to it but i did not move i'm still doing videos from here as well so i just had i basically expanded i didn't move alex asks i love your reviews a very random question just curious where you got your signature sunglasses uh, these steve punk glasses uh, actually I've had them for a while now, and in fact, right before the supply chain issue started, I actually secured a small a quantity of them. So I'm selling them myself for anybody who's interested. And in fact, if you go to my website, there's actually a section on there, what I'm calling the Amazon garage sale. It's kind of an overstock site. I've kind of partnered with some former Amazon sellers to, to try to get rid of some of the products. So I have a link below for those. So check it out if you're interested. It's still kind of a work in progress. So if you have any ideas for it, let me know what you think. Albert W asks, are there any products that you weren't impressed with at first but use all the time? I would say the Furwell broom. I was not impressed with it for its design function. But when I turned it over and started using the squeegee side on hard floors for pet hair, it's great for that. It took me a while to realize that's what it's good for. Uh, Nathan asks, what are some of your long-term plans on growing your channel? Any collabs in the works, guest appearances on your channel? My goal for 2022 is to have a, a small crew that's going to be mostly behind the camera, but occasionally will be in front of the camera with me. It'll allow me the opportunity to spend less time filming, editing, and more time on actually uh, presenting the product reviews. So uh, my, my goal is to actually have more people working with me to make the channel better. That's the goal. We'll see if it works out. Danielle asks, have you been posting less videos than normal? I haven't seen you in my recommended for over a month and I'm subbed. Well, what's up with that, YouTube? I actually have been posting less. I've only been posting one video a week. Uh, that's going to continue for the next month or so. It's kind of strategic. It also gives me a bit of a break as I head in the holidays where I intend to ramp things up quite a bit. Uh, this person asked, what's your favorite Kathy Mitchell product? Uh, I would say the red copper flip, which I used a lot. I have made I went through a grilled cheese phase for a while and I used it all the time. It, it kind of got old looking after a while. It was a little bit dirty, not as easy to clean, but I actually really like that one. For my final question, Two Tone Blue asks, how many gadgets do you currently have in your home garage? Rough guess. If I had to guess, I would say somewhere between three and 400. Anyways, that's it for the questions. Thanks for all those. I will answer some more in upcoming videos. So if you didn't see yours here, look for a future Q and A's again. I appreciate you sticking around this long and I'll see you next time.